Hi, my name is Paul Wilkinson, and along with Sarah Plater, I'm the co-author of Mastering Portrait Photography. And in the next minute or so, I'm going to talk about this image of Debbie that we've just taken in our studio and talk about both the lighting and the construction of the image. This particular image, um, usually I'd spend a bit of time with my client trying different angles, three-quarter views, uh, different lighting patterns, because every person's face lights slightly differently. With this particular image, though, I had no choice as we're mirroring a, an image I'd taken previously of her daughter, Megan, who works with us here in the studio. So um, I knew the lighting. Uh, Debbie's had her makeup done. You'll notice in the image there are side cheeks, um, black absorbers. Now these are just ref these are just making sure there's no light. Some people call them subtractors, but there's no light reflected from the sides. So with a beauty dish directly overhead, creating that well known but somewhat ill-named uh, butterfly lighting pattern. Has anyone yet seen a butterfly under the nose? I for one haven't. However, that's its traditional name. Um, so that you've got just the edge of the cat's lights in the eyes if you look closely. You've got a very gentle shadow under the nose and a very gentle shadow under the, under the chin. Created with a beauty dish in this particular instance. Something I can only get away with because A, Debbie is very beautiful and B, she's had her makeup done. Of course, because that image, although a uh, beauty dish is a really flattering dish for smooth skin, it's not good if you've got pores or wrinkles. What I've done then is bring the dish overhead so that the shadow is correct and I'm just, and I mean just, catching the highlight in the eyes from the dish and its angle. I've also got a reflector down low, but a huge one. I'm not a big fan of small reflectors if I can avoid them. We do use them, of course we do. But if you have a very big reflector or a white floor, it doesn't look like a reflector's involved. As soon as you have a small reflector, that telltale catch light in the bottom of the eye, or you've got a softbox on the floor, again, that telltale catch light in the bottom of the eye tells you that you are using up lighting. And I don't like to provide tells. You can, of course, Photoshop them out, best not to have them in if you can avoid it. So I'm using a really big reflector directly in front of Debbie, a dish over the top, and all I've asked her to do is to gaze steadily into the middle of the lens, almost as if she can see her reflection coming back at, back at her, or she can see my eye peering at her, which is probably a bit weird. Um, and that's all I've done, asked her to not smile, but to relax. I've asked her shoulders to come down, I've asked her to put her fingertips in her pockets. They're not in the shot, but it just lets her shoulders drop and to bring her elbows slightly down, so that she's just relaxed. Um, I've been taught as a presenter, centred and grounded works very effectively, but she needed to just kick away across onto one hip and she felt more comfortable. The two side cheeks are doing their job, they're bringing shadow in, they're enhancing the, the contouring that Abby, our makeup artist, has provided. They also bring shadow in underneath. Um, she's wearing a dark top anyway, so the whole thing then becomes about her eyes. Um, a little bit work in the black and white conversion, a little bit of post work to make sure the edges of the reflector are not visible, and then you have a very, very beautiful but very, very simple image of a very lovely lady.